It's time to make gumbo, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So, we've got a large pot heating up. We've got a saute pan heating up. And we've got a smaller pot on a simmering heat. Now, these two, they're on kind of a medium, maybe medium-low heat. We're going to make a roux in this one. And this one, we will sear our sausage. This one... We're going to heat up some stock. Let's go. And over at our prepping area, you've already seen these bad boys right here. So what we have here is one green bell pepper, one yellow onion, two sticks of celery, and then four to six cloves of garlic. If you have some smaller pieces of garlic, you may need around six. But if they're all the size of this bad boy right here, you can go with four. Over here, I've got two different brands of a hot smoked sausage. I gotta keep it 100. <laughs> and also, two seasoned rotisserie chickens that you can get from your local grocery store. Okay, so I'm gonna prep all these ingredients. First, I'm gonna start out by pulling apart this chicken. Now look, if that ain't your preference, c'est la vie, you do you. But this is how I get down. Paya! Okay, guys, so we've pulled apart the first chicken here. And as you can see, that's what it looks like. But I want you to know that we are saving all the remains here. We're going to use that. Also, don't toss out this liquid right here. That's good stuff. I'm going to show you what to do with that, too. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to our smaller pot over here that's on a simmering heat, we'll be adding three 32-ounce containers of chicken stock. Next, we will drop in the liquid from our rotisserie chickens. I have combined both of them into one little container here. There we go. From here, we're going to gently drop in the remains of the chicken that we pulled apart, all the bone and whatnot. You may see a little bit of chicken on there. Don't get all upset. I tried to pull off as much as I could. It can get tough towards the end. All right, just gonna get that in there real good. Now look, we are later going to separate all this by using a sifter. If you do not have a sifter and you wanna try it this way, you need to look into getting one because that's your best bet in being able to separate all of this stuff right here from the actual liquid. So, that's that. All right, so I'm gonna raise the fire on this, try to get it to a slight boil, and once I see that reached, I will cover it up and lower it back to a simmering heat and just let it sit there. Now, as for all my chicken, I'm gonna cover this up and move it to the fridge. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and get this sausage cut up. And there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it to this bowl right here and then just put it in the fridge. Okay, so this has got a good little boil here. So I'm uh, gonna cover that up and lower it to a good simmering heat. And since this is a simmer burner, I probably could put it midway. There we go. The time has arrived. Choo! Paya! You have just been chopped. All right, ladies and gentlemen, time to get started on our route. All right, guys. So I know in the past you have seen me do one cup of oil and one cup of flour. In the beginning, that's how I rolled when I made a roux. It was less likely to burn doing it that way. But since then... I now prefer going with 
two thirds cup of oil. A little bit less. And of course, one cup of all purpose flour. Bam. You bust out the paya spatula and you get to work. Okay, so if this is your first time seeing a roux being performed here, it's going to take a minute. A good minute. For me, it usually takes over an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. For some people, it could take up to two hours. I guess it all depends on the settings of your heat. Now, I like to go with a medium-low setting because I find you're less likely to have all the flour clump up a whole lot in the beginning. See, it gets to a nice, good, smooth consistency here fairly easily. And uh, you're also less likely to burn it that way, too. But from here, we just got to keep stirring. That's the name of the game. And as you can see, it is almost 3 p.m. You'll see how long this actually takes as I keep going. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we are roughly 15 minutes in here. And uh, as you can see, much of the bubbles are gone. It's still a tan color, so we have a good ways to go. Because as you guys know, we're looking for that chocolate color. Woohoo! Yeah, buddy. Okay, so at this point, though, it's okay to actually just, you know, let it sit here and there. You know, maybe a few minutes and then come back and stir. You know, that, that way it can really kind of take shape and, and the color can kind of form by cooking a little bit on the bottom of the pan and uh, you kind of save some of your energy too. So every couple minutes we're going to stir and just see how this plays out. So we are only roughly 30 minutes in and as you guys can see we have not changed color much. Like I said before it takes a good minute but we're coming along very smoothly. So like I said, I stir it a little bit like this, and then I'll let it sit for maybe a couple minutes, and then I'll stir it again. Now look, letting it sit like that only works if your fire's on medium to medium low heat. If you have a high fire, you better keep stirring. So I just noticed that I had used the three-fourths cup for the flour, uh, the three-fourths cup measuring cup. So I just added another fourth of flour to this because I was starting to think, man, this looks a lot thinner than what I remember. Ah, well, either way, it'll all work out. Look, as you can see, even though I just added more flour, it's still the same color. So sometimes we make mistakes while we're cooking. We just got to keep pounding. That's what I teach all my kids in martial arts. All right, so we are uh, over 45 minutes here, and it's a little tan. Not much. So as I told you guys, this takes me over an hour, usually at least an hour and a half. But at about this point, though, I do raise my fire up. About midway, maybe almost medium high heat, you know, and that way it can kind of speed up the process from here. It has thinned out quite a bit. So obviously you can control it a little bit better. And uh, I try to stay consistent at this point. If I let it sit, it's not for long, you know, maybe 20 seconds or so. All right, let's keep working. At about this point, too, I'm going to go ahead and strain out all this right here. Woohoo, let me tell you, that's some deliciousness up in there. Okay, so right here, as you can see, I've got my sifter, I've got a strainer below the sifter, and I've got another bowl below that. So we're going to try to catch everything we can here. We're going to be very careful. There we go. All right. All right, guys, so I'm just going to let you know from here, I will put this back in the pot, but I'm also going to run it one more time through this sifter. 
just so we can grab everything we can. I've since cleaned out this pot real good too. So just letting you know. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna cover that up, keep that on a low simmering heat and keep stirring our roux, which as you can see, it is now changing to that peanut butter color. We have reached roughly an hour. Keep going from here. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and start searing up the sausage. Ah. Lovely. So I dropped those in, but I'm gonna to continue to stir the roux and then go back and forth from the roux to the sausage. Stay tuned. There we go. Just get these moved around. Just wanna brown them up, you know? And see, that's good right there. Don't worry about that. We're going to get all that. That backside of the pan is probably hotter than the front due to the, the simmering of this pot. So I may just turn it around here so that way the other side can get just as hot. This is coming along beautifully. All right, so we're going to make sure we keep stirring our roux here. There we go. Look at that. Look at that color coming through. Y'all see that? See, we let it sit for a few seconds like this when it gets higher, and that color really starts to come through. And as you can see, we get into that good caramel looking color. We're going to keep going longer because we want to get to that good chocolate color. And we are about, you know, about an hour and 15 minutes in almost. We getting there, guys. Look, I'm gonna show y'all something with this stock. So if you want, you can actually like get this layer of stuff right here. Take that out. It's kind of like a layer of fat or whatever. It's called skimming. You can do that a couple times if you want. It's up to you. All right, this sausage is seared up really good. So at this time, we're gonna begin removing it and putting it into a bowl off on the side. Well, it wouldn't be traditional gumbo without some sausage on the floor. <laughs> we have reached our chocolate color, ladies and gentlemen. This is beautiful. I think it's time we drop those vegetables in. And for the sake of tradition, Baya! Start stirring. And we're going to saute this down for about another 10 minutes. It's going to get real dark at that point, too. But it'll all come together, trust me. Now, in this pan over here, we're going to ladle in some of this chicken stock. Yeah, break up that bottom. That's what we want. We want to get all that. Break all that up. Beautiful. Don't forget to come back to these boys right here. We're not trying to burn anything. Okay, so we've taken our sifter back out from the sink. We're going to pour all this goodness right through that sifter. Bam. That way we can pull up anything that we want to discard right there. See that, boy? That's how you get the flavor right there. Woohoo! Keep stirring your vegetables. I want to burn. In case you guys were wondering the time, right now it's about 4.30. And I'm about three minutes away from my 10-minute simmering process. So just as y'all can see, my roux took about an hour and 20 minutes, which is roughly about where I usually stand so all came together beautifully sometimes it might look really dark on screen but it's really it's a good brown color I don't know if you guys can see that looks beautiful looks good okay so at this point we're gonna ladle in a little bit of our hot stock over here one scoop at a time kind of stir at the same time Trying to get it all blended together evenly. Really good. Mm. 
go. A couple scoops. There you go. Now, I've mentioned before, if the roux gets all broken up, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Because when you cook it down, it's going to all come together anyway. Now, doing a little bit at a time like this, you know, nice and hot. As you can see, it's coming out real creamy, real creamy, which is really good consistency. A good base there for our gumbo. Put a little bit more in. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of it into the pot. There we go. All right, now we're gonna add some seasoning. One tablespoon of Cajun Creole seasoning. One teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of garlic powder. Three bay leaves. Just go ahead and blend that around. Go ahead and add your sausage back in. And four cups of water. Now look, some of you are gonna say, that's too much liquid. That's too thin. Why add water and not more stock? I get it. Everybody has a preference. I go this way because gumbo is supposed to have kind of a soup-like consistency. At least for me it does. I like to be able to tell the difference between gumbo and stew. Furthermore, I don't add more stock because stock has sodium in it. I get it. You can get the low sodium one, but I like adding water with a little bit of stock. Goes together well. All right, at this point, we're gonna raise the heat on this and bring it to a boil. I watch my spoon here, don't want it to fall in. Bam. We're gonna get it to a boil. Then, once we see it boiling, we're gonna cover, lower the simmer, and let it cook for one hour. There we go. So, let's go ahead and cover this up. Get on there. And we will lower to a simmering heat. And let this cook for one hour. All right, one hour is up. That is beautiful. So look, I'm gonna get rid of that bay leaf right there because uh, I see it. It's always good to get rid of your bay leaves as soon as you can. Put it off the side. Okay, so just to let you guys know some people may actually skim this top layer if you want. I mean, it's, it's not much. I mean, what it is, is it's the oil that has risen to the top. But you can see it's just a thin layer because we actually use less oil in our roux. So you can just keep mixing it around. It's, it's flavor. You know, I mean, if you eat fried food, you shouldn't be afraid of this. Okay, so at this point, we are going to go ahead and add our chicken in. And it's been in the fridge, so it's kind of congealed here. Oh, that's probably not the safest thing to do. All right, let me stir that in. There we go. Break that up. Looking good. All right. Now that we have got this blended in, we're going to bring the heat back up, get a slight boil again. And once we see a slight boil, we're gonna cover it up, lower back down to simmer, and cook for one more hour. All right, so real quick. From the first video, I caught a ton of flack for not having okra in this gumbo. Because it's not gumbo unless you have okra. Well, according to the Oxford Dictionary, which has been around since the 1800s, there are multiple definitions, one of which is just okra. Now. We can't call this okra, because clearly there's a lot more going on here than okra. So you check 
the sub-definition, which says according to Cajun cuisine, it is a soup-like dish with some spice, some chicken or seafood, and it is thickened with okra or rice. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You can have okra or you cannot have okra, and it can be gumbo. But, with that being said, I still don't feel like arguing with 10,000 people. So here you go. Gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess it's just going to sit there like that. Ah, well. All right, we boiling. So once again, we cover this up. Lower our fire to a simmering heat. And let this bad boy cook for one more hour. Just so y'all know, at this time, you also want to get started on cooking some rice. Trust me. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Choo! Look at that gumbo sitting in the middle of my gumbo. <laughs> All right, let me give this a quick stir. Looking delicious. Delicious. All right, ladies and gentlemen, going to do the last little part that I always do. I turn my fires off, and then I add a cold bottle of water. Bam. Okay, so here lies all the critics. So listen, here's the thing. I'm not adding any more water than I would normally add. I would want roughly about six cups of water. However, I save two cups at the end cold because what happens is it does a quick change of temperature and allows all these flavors to really come together. I came across this kind of by accident because one time I made gumbo and the flavors were a little powerful. So I told my wife, you know what? I'm just going to ask my water. And I grabbed a bottle of water out the fridge and threw it in and there lied the best gumbo I had ever made. So I do that to this day, take it for what it's worth. That's how I get down. But all in all, it's time to bowl up. Let's go. Yeah. All right, y'all, let's do a little run through. I'm going to start it off humming. Home. <laughs> all right, here we go. Love it. Now we get some juice. A little more juice, shall we? We shall. Beautiful. Can't forget my uh, gumbo. <laughs> I'm gonna mess with y'all forever. It's all gravy, baby. Let's eat. We did it. <laughs> So October 17th marked the anniversary of the infamous gumbo video. It has been two years since that video dropped. And I gotta tell you, it has been amazing. Uh, through the ups and downs, it's all been amazing. You know, there was a lot of, a lot of great feedback and then there was a lot of not so great feedback. But ultimately it led me to here, which I'm very thankful for. So as you guys may have seen, I did some things different. I added more chicken stock. I used all the leftover bones and stuff from the, the uh, rotisserie chickens and threw it in the chicken stock. I seared the sausage. I used less oil in the roux. Overall, I'm very happy with how it come out. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a bite. Shall we? Oh, I can tell you, it looks so good. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't wanna spill it, oh. But it looks really good. I got my okra in there for all you people that get all offended about not having okra. Now look, one more thing. If you like filet, because that's another big uh, 
jolt of criticism that I take from everyone. I say leave it on the side, let people add their desire to mount in, uh, you know, use it as a condiment. Practice safe eating, use a condiment. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a bite of this. Ooh, that is hot. Here we go. As I expected, it's just this unbelievable whirlwind of flavor, you know? It's unlike any liquid broth you've ever tasted. It's such a unique flavor, you know? That flavor of the sausage has like married into the, 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 the brown liquid here, you know? And then you, you got the good chicken flavor because not only do we have chicken stock, we have the flavor of rotisserie chicken in there. You know, and if you've had rotisserie chicken and you enjoy rotisserie chicken, the flavor of that in your gumbo, it's unbelievable. It's so good. Mm. All right, all right. Let me, let me get a little bite of this guy right here. Good, good and hot. He has uh, soaked up the goodness. Let's see. I prefer it in seafood gumbo. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, all right, guys. We did it. We have captured the essence of chicken and sausage gumbo in crystal clear high definition. <laughs> I finally knocked this one out. Thank you all once again for tuning into all these videos. It's been an awesome two years. I hope to continue to hang out with you guys some more in these videos. Oh, one more thing. All right, so there have been plenty of y'all have been asking about the paya spatula. I sold out. I completely sold out of the entire case that I purchased. And I am just so humbled and thankful that you guys would want to cook with my product. So thank you all that purchased one. It means a lot to me. Those of you who are looking to get one, I got more on the way. So go like my other page, Cajun Ninja Products, and you'll be able to keep up with upcoming Cajun Ninja items. Like the paya spatula. <laughs> well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all once again. I'll see you next time. Paya!